hey, Sean here, and this will be my uh, mythic guide and commentary to the Fate Scribe Rokalo. Um, and for this fight, um, again, a few different builds you can run here. Um, never run a lot of speakers, or <laughs> a lot of speakers, but one speakers on this fight, literally no point to do it. Um, the way the kind of damage needs work out in this uh, fight is that Earthquake will be pretty much about the same um, as uh, one speakers as far as single target goes. There's no real reason to do it, and your job on this fight is to shred the adds. Um, so the absolute max damage build you can go is the, uh, what do you call it, the, um, the Storm Belly build with uh, Earth and Rage, Aftershock, um, Primal Elementalist, obviously. Um, and I don't recommend actually playing it your first few times through. I recommend playing um, what I played and still play, um, just because uh, my guild's a little bit um, strict on like people playing like full um, nuke adds like type builds. Um, even though the build I recommend on this fight is actually perfectly fine um, at doing single target damage. In fact, it's actually like pretty comparable because Storm Melee is actually a pretty bursty CD. And the only real damage check in this fight is actually the very end. And P3, um, if your guild happens to do the strategy where you just kill the boss and zerg it, don't do any mechanics in the last phase. Um, that <clears throat> Storm Melee is more than fine for doing that because it'll burst for like 15, 20k. Um, since Storm Ellie is just way bristier than Fire Ellie. Um, but yeah, I recommend just playing um, Echoes, Elemental Blast, Ice Fury with Moat. Um, run Wind Rush, obviously, just for extra mobility. Um, taking out bombs or doing rings, whatever. Um, Wind Rush is just super good, super good ability. Um, definitely run Echoes on this fight. You can run Seeds. It doesn't really have a purpose since, um, again, your Storm Ellie kind of like uh, Soul Render just naturally lines up with things. So getting extra cast doesn't really help. In fact, it kind of actually harms you because you're essentially just losing a legendary slot. Um, so definitely run Echoes on this. Definitely the best Lego by far. And um, yeah, beyond that, that's kind of what you're going to want to take. Um, if you do run the uh, Storm Alley build, you're definitely going to run, run um, what is it called, Dreamweaver. Um, you can run Terrain. It is pretty, a little bit more consistent, I would say, running Terrain, um, since you're less um, liable to RNG um, as far as crits go. But um and then dream Weaver, of course is like a turret thing so you have to kind of know the fight a little bit better so i definitely recommend just playing Karain your first time through um and playing the um top row of talents there so here's a recent reclear of um the face grab that we have in my guild um so you'll notice just like in just like on soul Ender, um you're gonna be stormkeepering at about 10 seconds that's again just to make sure you still get a stormkeeper cast um and like uh have it still line up with the ads um, so you can run badge on this fight. I actually just recommend running badge on this fight in general. Um, but you can also still run gland and the KT trinket. Those are really strong setup pretty much. If, um, you're not like it's, if it's an AOE fight and you're not running badge, then you're going to want to just go gland and KT trinket in general. Um, those are always just strong combo, um, a little bit more consistent damage and not uh, like a burst all adds thing. So. Um, just pretty good the way you're going to kind of play your maelstrom is <clears throat> the ad kind of spawns and you're not going to be if you like instantly spend um on like just depending on how many people actually switch to the ad or like where the tank um, drags it and just a whole bunch of other factors that you can't really control um i wouldn't drop like your second eogs i believe it is your second Echo's proc, I wouldn't just drop it. I would just keep refreshing it until the ads actually spawn. And of course, um, your Stormkeeper should come up a little bit before the ad actually dies. And when the ad is out, you just full focus it because you you actually want it to die. That way you can actually spend all your shit like as soon as possible. So uh, make sure you are hitting that ad. You're actually a pretty good class for hitting it. And you're just going to like blow your shit on the ad as soon as it spawns. Um, if you get runes in this phase, then uh, well, you should out of luck. You can't really... I wouldn't really bother like trying to spear walkers and hit the ads you might just fuck the entire raid and like wipe just because you want to do a little bit more damage if you get the runes just accept it's not your pull you're not going to parse um but the way you just play this intermission is make sure you dot both the ads with flame shock and um your stormkeeper should come up um during this phase depending um on how like your dps is if it comes up like towards the later half of this phase kind of like mine does then you need to either pop it immediately or you just sit on it. 
like you see how I've kind of sat on it here. Um, at this point, there's no way I can like actually pop it and have it for the ads. So I just sit on it. Um, if I had popped it immediately, I probably could have had it, but the way my things lined up, I probably wasn't gonna be able to actually make use out of it. Um, so yeah. And then of course, this is just rinse and repeat. Uh, make sure you drop a wind rush if it's called for, or if you just see a good time to do it. Good times to drop a wind rush is just when bombs are getting taken out or grim portents. Um, and specifically the second set of bombs, it's very helpful for them to have movement or even if there's um, lasers and you guys are kind of far from a safe spot. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, the only other tips I can really recommend um, is we're kind of not as fast as other classes, obviously. So if you are important, consider using your soul shape to get there, but um, only do it if you absolutely have to. <clears throat> One tip I can, I can give you actually that is very helpful um, is the way the second set of bombs works is that the bombs will go out, you need to find a safe spot, and beams will happen at the same time. You need to not panic and just find a spot that is safe, even if it is in a beam. If it's in a beam, note that when the bombs go off and the lasers go off is like staggered. So you can have, you can drop your bomb, you still have like one second to actually get out of the beam. So that's the best time to soul shape. You actually want to save your soul shape in case something like that happens where you have to sit in a beam because you can drop your bomb in the beam, bombs go off, you have one second, you blink, soul shape out of the beam's path, and you're good to go. Don't have to blow defensive, don't have to actually eat the beam or anything. You live perfectly fine, and you actually look pretty sick as fuck doing it. Um, a lot of people don't even know that you can do that, so maybe even impress, you know, your old leader, or a leader would have you into a better guild, because uh, you're a big boy and you make big plays. So yeah, um, that's just a little tip I can give you there. Um, <clears throat> the way you do the rings is pretty much the same in every guild. Um, and just kind of make sure you hug like the uh, very outside. Um, as range, you actually don't even need to really dodge the, um, the thingy. What is it called? The like spawner, I think is what we call it. The thing that spawns the orbs. Uh, just make sure you don't get hit by the orbs. It's really bad. Um, usually they'll just one shot you um, unless like your healers are insane. So yeah. Um, and then when you get to P3, most guilds just with this gear, they just burn the boss straight up with four healers. Um, if you have to actually do this phase out, like do a set of rings, do adds, things like that. I mean, it's still the same fight as it was before. Just make sure you, you pull your maelstrom and pull your procs in time for the ad spawns. Um, make sure your stormtrooper is going to line up <clears throat> for the ads. Make sure you're focusing the uh, shade if the red leader wants you to. Um, and just focus on mechanics because uh, you won't parse if the boss doesn't die. Um, so yeah, that's just how you play the fight. I'll go ahead and skip it because again, you just focus the boss. So you can see we kill it. And there you go. So only one fight left, just have to do KT and then the whole rig is done. And then we can do a little review and kind of talk about uh, maybe next tier and um, kind of how El Shaman looks coming into next tier, assuming we don't get buffed um, and nothing changes. Um, but again, thank you for watching and see you next time. Peace.